Hello, and welcome to this lesson, which will show you how to use the pyramid principle for problem solving. This is a tool you can use firstly to help you structure your communication and storytelling for maximum impact, and secondly, to structure and solve a problem you are facing in your organization. After you have finished this training, you will be able to firstly, Understand how to use the pyramid principle for persuasive communication. And secondly, understand how to use the pyramid principle for problem solving, which entails identifying the key question to answer, identifying the root causes, and checking whether your pyramid fulfills all the key requirements. To begin with, from a communication perspective, you may already be using the pyramid principle in your daily lives. Take the example in the slide. On the left, the person logically and sequentially explains some arguments before concluding with their main point that they have accepted a new job in Cairo. However, on the right, the person starts with their main point about accepting a new job in Cairo before going on to explain their main arguments for doing so. Which discussion would you like to have? Which discussion is more impactful and gets to the point quicker? And similarly, with this example, which email would you like to receive? Which email is more impactful and gets to the point quicker? If you take the time to cluster and structure information, then it is easier to speak in a way that enables the audience to listen and understand you and remember what you said. The idea of the pyramid approach builds exactly on this idea and implies that your line of argumentation should be shaped like a pyramid to make it easier, faster and more persuasive to follow you. In traditional speaking conversations, you might build up to a climax and your main points. But in a business context, your arguments can be challenged before you have reached your main conclusion. With the pyramid approach, you start with the answer, then support it through your arguments. This is a persuasive way to deal with senior executives, as it shows you have stood back from the problem and are offering solutions backed with the arguments that truly matter. Using the pyramid principle, often requires a change in mindset and can take practice and experience to develop. But the good news is it can be used and practiced in almost every aspect of our lives, from preparing a holiday to finalizing a work presentation or even in preparation for a job interview. How can you incorporate the pyramid principle into your daily lives? Now, Let's take a look at how you can use the pyramid principle to structure and solve a problem. A pyramid structure can be built in three steps. The first step is to conceptualize the problem and define the key question you are trying to solve. The second step is to build the pyramid from the key question and identify the main issues and root causes of the problem. The third step is to check your pyramid to see if it is answering your question. Let's address each of these steps in turn. In the first step, you need to define the key question which establishes the entire direction of your analysis. Ensure you agree it with your peers or manager before building your pyramid structure. In the slide, you will see that the key questions flow from the complications facing the organization, which flow from the organization's specific situation or business context. For example, Company A has been a market leader for 10 years, but is now losing market share, which poses the key question of how to compete to maintain market leadership. In the second step, you need to build the pyramid. A pyramid can be created with the key question you identified in step 1, or it can be created with a statement which is an early hypothesis or argument of what needs to be done. It is practical to start with a question-driven tree early in the project. 
when there is less information available, and then evolve to a statement or hypothesis-driven tree further in the project once more insights become available. Let's look at an example of each approach. In this example, you can see that the pyramid starts with a question. You need to drill down vertically until there are no more relevant questions to ask, given the current context. As you drill down vertically, you also need to ensure the structure is horizontally connecting questions within a group, as shown in the slide. The pyramid can be constructed with either inductive or deductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning is a bottom-up approach, whereby different themes are combined to collect thoughts and facts to obtain a specific conclusion. For example, from the slide, we could argue that Business Unit X is well-positioned within its parent company because it has the right people, processes and tools in place. In contrast, deductive reasoning is a top-down approach, whereby conclusions are based on themes that are generally assumed to be true. For example, from the slide, if Business Unit X's sales volume correlates with growth in the segment, and both the business segment and business unit X are forecast to grow, then we can conclude that the unit's market segment is growing. This approach is mainly used to structure communication to audiences that need to be convinced. In this example, you can see that the pyramid starts with a statement or hypothesis that answers the key question. In this instance, you need to drill down the key statements into relevant issues, ensuring the issues are separate but are inside the scope of the key statement. Once you have drilled down into sub-issues, it should be possible to identify the root causes of the key statement. From the pyramid tree on the slide, you can see that Company A needs to maintain double-digit profitability. The subsequent drill-down analysis has shown that the company can do this by decreasing distribution costs via a reduced number of outlets and by increasing the number of products sold by introducing new products. The third step in building a pyramid structure is to check whether all the requirements of the pyramid are fulfilled. Ideas at any level in the pyramid must always be summaries of the ideas grouped below them and ideas in each grouping must always be the same kind of idea. Ideas in each grouping must be logically ordered using deductive or inductive reasoning. Let's finish this lesson with a short practical exercise. In the pyramid you can see, try to assign the correct issues to the layers in the pyramid. The answers are on the next slide. And now for the solution. Thank you for participating and see you next time on another exciting business training lesson from Pontema.